Welcome back, everyone. Channel 3 is your election authority. The presidential race still too close to call as votes continue to be counted in key states right now. You can see them. They are white on the map. Now, Face the Nation moderator Margaret Brennan is joining us live right now from Washington, D.C., as she does every Friday. Margaret, we know you've had quite a week. Uh, <laughs> anything but quiet, that's for sure, and I'm sure you'll have a busy weekend. Uh, when do we expect solid results for all of this? What do you think? I know I've been sitting here refreshing my screen on the vote <laughs> tallies to see just what the margins are um, because they are so narrow in so many states that we are still waiting to have officially called. Uh, this is something I think there's really a lot of concern about getting right, particularly for the election officials who are tabulating these ballots in states like Pennsylvania, which is going to potentially decide the election outcome and will be heavily scrutinized. Uh, we know in Georgia there is already a recount of ballots uh, planned because that is something, given how narrow the margin is, that will be required uh, under their local laws. So it may take a while for the states themselves to officially certify, but we could more likely see news organizations begin to give projections on which way the states are headed uh, based just simply on the numbers and, and what we know so far. We also know, though, that litigation is being prepared. The Trump campaign already has about four lawsuits ongoing in Pennsylvania. They are clearly looking at a strategy of trying to litigate a different outcome to the election if they don't see these tallies uh, tilt somehow in their direction. And at this point, as you said, they are very much tilting in Joe Biden's direction. A large portion of this just because we had so many mail-in ballots due to the pandemic and they're counted last. Margaret, we also want to ask you about the House and the Senate. Democrats still hold the House, but they did happen to lose some seats. They did not gain a majority in the Senate. So what do you think was missing in the Democratic Party's messaging with voters? I think this is an important conversation to have. We're going to have it on Sunday uh, with Joe Manchin, the senator from West Virginia, because he is a Democrat who um, is from a state that, that largely supports and voted for President Trump again. Uh, and so he can, in some ways, put his finger on the pulse of what uh, what working class America in particular is seeing still uh, as promised by President Trump and not delivered on by the Democratic Party. Remember, Joe Biden sold himself as the one candidate who had this very unique ability to connect with working class America, to bring those voters back to the Democratic Party. Uh, you know, in many states, th these working class Americans had voted for Democrats, including Barack Obama, uh, in two elections, and then they tried out President Trump in 2016. You didn't see the delivery of the blue wave uh, that many had predicted in Congress. And, and so there is some um, hotly argued about, you know, sort of autopsy of, of, of exactly what happened here among Democrats themselves and what direction the party has taken. It will matter to Joe Biden if he does secure the presidency because it could reflect what kind of mandate he has and what direction uh, he will take the country. Okay, Margaret Brennan, what a week it's been. And I know more mm -hmm. to come over the next few days. We appreciate you joining us this afternoon again. And just a reminder, you can catch Margaret on Face the Nation this Sunday, action-packed show, I'm sure, 10.30 in the morning here on Channel 3. Before that, join us for a special live edition of Face the State with Kevin Rennie and Doobie McDowell. That's at 8.30. Again, that will be live this Sunday on Channel 3.